what most of America doesn't understand is if we don't put our house in order, we're going to look like Greece or Ireland or even Spain and Italy, which are coming, or even maybe ultimately Japan. Uh, and so, so time is of the essence for us, and you're seeing the uh, economists around the world starting to worry about whether or not we're going to make the substantive changes in, to austerity that we need to make in our country to correct our course and to create the confidence uh, that we don't wind up like an Ireland. The problem that faces our country today, the last 30 years we've lived off the future and the bill's come and due. And so there, there cannot be anything that's not put on the table. There will not be one American that will not be called to sacrifice. Uh, those that uh, are, are more well-to-do will be called to sacrifice to a greater extent. But the fact is, is if we all want a success for our future uh, for our kids and, and we want to see a renewal in America's productivity and growth, we're going to have to make sacrifices. And we, we've, both Republican and Democratic administrations have refused to do that. And, and we're at a time where we don't have the option anymore. And we need to make those decisions ourselves rather than have those decisions forced upon us. First of all, we haven't even done the hard work of identifying all the duplications in the federal government. A year ago, or two years ago, I asked the GAO to give me a report of all the government programs that are out there so we could cross-reference which ones do the same thing. It's taken the GAO a year and a half, and they refused to do it until I put it in the last debt limit extension. But, for example, we could save about $50 billion a year by eliminating programs. I'll give you a couple examples. We have a 267 job training programs across 39 different agencies. Why do we have 267 of them? We have 105 programs to encourage people to go in science and technology, engineering, and math. That's 105 sets of bureaucrats. None of them have metrics on it. We have $100 billion at a minimum of fraud in Medicare and Medicaid. The health care bill didn't significantly address that. That's money that's just being blown away. The Pentagon can't even audit its own books. It doesn't even know where its money's going. And we refuse to have the tough forces go on the Pentagon so that they at least are efficient with the money that they're spending. So we, we, we have a realm of about $350 billion that will not truly impact anybody in this country that we could eliminate tomorrow. Some economists say that if, if we cut spending, it'll hurt our recovery. Well, we just set up uh, about a trillion dollars to be spent in the economy over the next few years uh, in terms of the stimulus. So I, I think there's no problem that we could cut 100 or $200 billion and start making a down payment and come to an agreement. Yeah, I, I think within three to four years, if we have not done the critical changes that we have to make, I think the confidence in our economy and in our currency uh, will be undermined significantly. A and uh, that may scare some folks. It's not intended to. But the fact is, is we're living off our future, and everybody else in the world that's doing that today is getting punished. And what makes us think we can continue to do that? And so if we send a signal to the rest of the international financial community that we are going to start down a road to austerity, we're going to start living within our means, we're going to decrease our spending, we're going to look at what the true role of the federal government is and try to limit with our impact to that range, and we're going to eliminate programs that are not a priority. Chris, the issue is not whether government can do good things. It does great things. The question is, is what are the good things it can do and still afford to do it without doing significant harm? And what is happening in our country is we're not taking seriously the very real and urgent threat that will undermine the standard of living in this country. And I, I agree. I told you the other evening that if we didn't take some pain now, we're going to experience apocalyptic pain. And it's going to be well, out let, of our let, control. Let's talk, and the let's idea talk. should be that we control it. I think you'll see a 15 to 18 percent unemployment rate. I think you'll see an 8 to 9 percent decline in GDP. I think you'll see the middle class just destroyed if we don't do this. Uh, and the people that it will harm the most will be the poorest of the poor because we'll print money to try to debase our currency and get out of it. And what you'll see is hyperinflation. So uh, we don't have a lot of options other than living within our means and sending the signal that creates confidence that we can repay our debt and that we're not going to debase our currency to do it. I don't care if you're rich or poor, liberal or conservative, if we don't fix the problems in front of us, 
everybody's going to pay a significant price. And the very fact that we have $1.1 trillion in tax expenditures every year that directs capital in a way that the government says it should be directed rather than the way it should be directed based on markets tells us that we have a terrible tax system. And we need to reform our tax system. And at the same time, we need to eliminate a lot of the waste, fraud, abuse, and duplication in the federal government. You know, I'm not in the Senate for the Republican Party. I'm in the Senate for America and for the future of our country. And if, if, if we're going to measure everything by Republican Democrat, we're going to continue this, down this course that's going to result in our failure. Chris, the history of republics is they average 200 years of life. And they all fail in the history over fiscal matters. They rot from within before they collapse or are attacked. And it's always over fiscal issues. And we need a wake-up call. We need real leadership, Democrat, Republican, and Independent, to stand up and say we have to live within our means. It means all of us will sacrifice. We, there's not a problem we can't solve if, in fact, we quit denying what the real problem is and start working on it instead of playing politics with it. So we need to go after what the real problems are, not the symptoms, and not pay attention to the naysayers on both the left and the right and fix our country. And if we do, we have a wonderful future. If we don't, we have a bleak future.